making a profit isn't bad. This is Nick from Retro Games HQ, and today I'm going to be talking about microtransactions, DLC, and early access games. I'll start with microtransactions. First off, they're awesome. They're awesome. They're they're almost a hero. Despite them being derided as greedy or predatory or some other morally evil word to be like, I can't believe that they're doing this. They're, you know, taking advantage of the situation or, or something like that. They're actually good. And I'll get into it why. But first off, what is microtransaction? It's just when someone can buy something in game for a small amount of money. That's why the mar micro part. So it's just an alternative form of monetization to a full price game or to a what you might want to call macro transaction, which is what could be argued paid DLC is. But no one has a problem with DLC in, in principle. Now, there are problems. I'm going to get into that later, but that's not for this section. <laughs> now, the thing with microtransactions, right, is that what does it incentivize? It incentivizes more content being made, such as skins, or characters, things like that. These things that are often made, I mean, I mean, you got gun skins, you got character skins, you got, uh, t honestly, a ton of things, one-liners, you know, audio um, packs, crap like that. And that's what they incentivize. They incentivize small amounts of content so they can sell it for small amounts. So in comparison to full price games that have no microtransactions you might have a reason to or you do have a reason to expect uh, other things being equal that you're going to have more content like that the small content that you can pay for small amounts of money let's get into a little bit why people hate it now I'm going to be addressing the really crappy games that have microtransactions that are almost unplayable even with microtransactions later, because I don't think that's a problem with microtransactions. I, people that do have a problem with microtransactions and points of those games are misdirected. Let me say that. So one of the things that started popping up, I guess, a couple years ago, and I think it's died down some, but it is something that I can foresee that it will come up in the future, is that the problem with gambling, microtransactions, and kids. People are like, isn't it just microtransactions when it comes to loot boxes? Aren't those just... Isn't that just pretty much gambling? Well, here's the thing, right? Gambling is just when you do an action that possibly can result in receiving something, whether it's physical or not, in return. You know, there's different forms of gambling. Sometimes you're guaranteed stuff. And sometimes you aren't. It, you know, when you're guaranteed something, it's pretty much a bet on what can you get. You put money in, can I get this? And that's what a lot of loot boxes are. It's just, you're going to get a certain amount of items, but are you going to get certain ones? And gambling, children gambling is not a problem. If you say it has a pro if it is a problem, if gambling and children is a problem, then you have to have a problem with gotcha games, and you have to have a problem with trading card games. Because in the real world, that is gambling. That is just like loot boxes. You put your coin into the vending machine, you turn the knob, and you hope you get a certain one. You're going to get one, but you hurt, hope you get a, this, a certain item out of it. Or with TCG, you're going to get however many cards are in that pack, whether 10, 9, 11, whatever. But it depends. You know, it's you don't know what cards you're going to get. That's the part of it that you don't know that does make it a bit of gambling and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever there's no moral there's so many things that you can be like this is gambling because you kind of are in a form that you're doing something in a hope that something else happens that's what gambling is all about and we've not had a problem with it before for good reason i don't even know if the most fundamentalist of people would have a problem with some kid putting in 25 cents to get a little, you know, gotcha item. I, I seriously don't know if there's even a person out there that has a problem with it. Now, of course, gambling can become a problem. Obviously, for children, for adults, it can become a problem. But that's not a problem with microtransactions or loot boxes. That's a problem with the person. Now, moving on more to loot boxes is that it's a thing that many people enjoy. It's undeniable that many people find 
joy and have utility pretty much i guess or they value getting loot boxes and you might say well that's because the only options they have but even when they these developers if they thought they could make more money and people would be more satisfied with just buying certain items you know so you have a super rare item we're going to sell it to you for 45 bucks versus that super cheap item that you, you don't care about we'll sell it to you for five cents that's what loot boxes are all about it helps you pay a lower amount of money with the chance of getting something that if it was sold by itself it would actually be sold at a higher price so that's the whole thing about loot boxes and Overall, it seems consumers actually enjoy loot boxes. Then there's a certain excitement with getting a loot box. Kind of like when you do the lottery. It's, you get to imagine, what if I get this? So it's a thing of excitement, and it's a thing of, hey, there's a chance I may get something I like that is a bit rarer. Again, that if you had paid for specifically, you would pay for a higher price. And you can see this in, for example, Pokemon cards. The Packs are just a few bucks, but you can pull 100, 200, 300 dollar, 50 buck, whatever uh, cards from it. And loot boxes are essentially just TCG booster packs, to be quite honest, or a gotcha game. And I just the I have so many problems with people complaining about microtransactions because yes, there are games that suck with microtransactions. Okay, there's no denying it. There are games that take advantage. Not I'm gonna not gonna say take advantage. There's games that are unplayable without microtransactions that are free i don't have as much problem with those sometimes because sometimes i actually have zero problem with those depending on the game the problem that comes about is for example like these games that you see on twitter advertised that when you get the game it has nothing to do with it but there's microtransactions and it's unplayable and it's a crappy game but my problem with that is it's a crappy game and that's all there is to it. It's a crappy game. I don't want crappy games out there. So of course I'm going to have a problem with it. But I'm not going to have a problem with the microtransactions. And honestly the fact that people just hate on microtransactions. It shows how spoiled we are with microtransactions. Because not only we used to not have. Okay with older games you didn't really have too many like aesthetic customization things you know you didn't have a million freaking skins to put on and things like that and that's what microtransactions allow us to have it also allows us to have freemium games rather games that are free but you can also pay for it with microtransactions and this accounts for 18 out of the 19 top games on the app store as of me making this video 18 out of the 19 i i wish i would have done 20 but i i kept counting and it's only showing me the top 19 i swear so 18 of them are freemium only one of them you actually pay for up front it's evident people love freemium games which are going to include micro transactions and there's a reason for it it's because we're getting games for free and it is an optional thing to pay for it and people that really want to pay for it, they also benefit from it. They get an advantage that they wouldn't have had otherwise if they had just bought it as a full-priced game. And, you know, even some freemium games. Valorant, Genshin Impact, uh, Duel Links. There's a ton of very popular games that are actually freemium that work off of microtransactions. And we wouldn't have those for free if it wasn't for those microtransactions. Now, the irony of calling it greedy or predatory is that who gets to benefit from free games the most do you think it's the people that are that would be willing to pay full price up front for that game no it's going to be the people who are less willing or less able to pay for a game so to say that it's greedy first off even if it was greedy when it comes to those cases who cares? Why should you care? If a greedy person makes it easy, makes, you know, benefits the poorest the most out of the product, you should be like, man, they're greedy. But their consequence, the consequences of their actions are as if they were not greedy. So microtransactions get a bad rap when they're giving us tons of free games, they're giving us tons of content. Yes, you have some games that try to be crappy games and then use microtransactions uh, to say, hey, you can actually play this game if you 
pay with microtransactions, which I'm not even going to bash all the games that are freemium that to play them, you do have to pay microtransactions. And here's why. I know what's happening. People are playing it, right? People are playing these games and they're getting to that point and they're like, oh, crap, I have to pay for this? I don't want to. Cool. But you got to play the game up to that point for free. And the people who are paying for the microtransactions to go forward might have a chance to pay for pay less than what they would if it was at full price because what these freemium games often do is actually go off of wells people are willing to drop 100 200 300 bucks and actually those people have benefited from microtransactions too because they get like i said advantages that they wouldn't have had otherwise and it's just a different form of monetization it's not predatory it's not greedy and if it is greedy it seems like it helps the poorest the most so the fact that it gets attacked is insane microtransaction games are some of them can be horrible yes but microtransactions to me are just it's a hero microtransactions like is a hero because it has allowed me to play so many games for so many hours for free that i didn't have to pay a single cent to and if i ever did pay a cent to it's to enjoy it more it's dual links to get one more booster pack you know or it was you know any game really valorant any other fps that hey i get to get this uh, skin or paladins you know things like that it's just people demonize microtransactions when they are fantastic now going to the next thing that's going to be early access games because I'm going to get my kind of first two most controversial issues or uh, thoughts out there. The first one's definitely microtransactions. Me saying, hey, don't bash them. They're amazing. It's not greedy. It's not predatory. They help the poorest the most. The people that are willing to pay or able to pay the, uh, you know, the least. The premature ones that cannot pay or do not want to pay, they're the benefit the most. But with the, uh, with, sorry, with uh, early access games, I don't like early access games. In fact, by default, right? I mean, there's exceptions to it. Yeah, heck yeah, I've played, I've paid for many early access games before, and I'm gonna keep paying for some of them. But in default, or by default, my answer is I'm not gonna buy early access games because what it does is it directly incentivizes the production of unfinished games. The full product is not there, but you are paying. For a product so of course you are literally directly incentivizing them to keep making the game instead of finishing the game now the my ugh, the overall funds might increase from early access sales and it might help push over their funds to be able to finish the game there's no denying that that's definitely happened before but it will lead to more unfinished games as it is a direct incentive and there's more to it for example Early access sales can actually lead to lengthened uh, development phases. You know, because they're like, well, we have this money now and we don't have to, we're not having a cash flow issue. We're having more money come in. Uh, we can, you know, it isn't a matter of we need to make money. It's we are making money. We can lengthen this to make this a better game. And it can be used to add more content, which is a positive. Absolutely. Maybe they're optimizing it changing mechanics things like that but there are some problems with the lengthening development uh, phase and that it can get too big they can try to incorporate too many things because they can't properly implement it because it's like they are like hey we can add this to it now that we have these funds and we can keep making it we don't have to be in such a rush it can also delay the release which for some people depending on the game they're not gonna have a problem with that it's like okay you know um an extra half year extra year that's fine if i get a better game and so it's fine but it is a consequence of a lengthened development phase now it can also lead to early access actually can lead to decreased interest in a game because people who were interested in the game can play it in early access where there's less content does maybe the story's not fully fleshed out or anything like that they play it they get through it faster uh, okay whatever they're, they're not really interested in it they lose interest of course there is a possibility that it's the opposite that hey you got early access they update it you keep up with it and it's a game that you wouldn't have kept up with if you hadn't gotten early access to it so there are two things uh, there are two sides to that coin absolutely now i'm trying to move on to my next point if i can yeah 
actually see it. But a lengthened development phase incentivizes people to, once the funds dry up, to not finish the game. And we see this in early access games that get abandoned and then the developers move on to new games. It's not unheard of. You make an early access game. You don't have to imagine this. You get paid money for not having a complete game. And you don't have to finish it because you can just move on to the next game and not finish it either. So it incentivizes that kind of game production. Also, with the total funds argument, thinking back on it, actually, there is a possibility of... <sighs> so saying that, hey, they got enough money to finish the game, that is a possibility. But they could also increase their total funds and say, we can lengthen the, like I said, lengthen the production phase. And then you've got this problem of Maybe they could have had enough money before early access funds to finish the game, but with this lengthened process, which can result in more problems, if you know anything about coding, or you, well, you, it just increases the risk overall, it can become a problem where they don't get the game out, actually. Because if they would have just finished the game that they were aiming for before they got the early access funds, then they could have finished it with the funds they had. But now that they've tried to expand this game because they've gotten this these funds that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten they lengthen it too much or something comes up and they can't finish it and that's another thing a problem with lengthening development phase is that it increases risks so it's a it can be a problem you're also going to have more unfinished games because it can lead to lengthened development phases and lengthened development phases lead to more risk because the future is uncertain. So not only are you directly subsidizing unfinished or I say incentivizing unfinished games, there's also a possibility of you incentivizing lengthened development phase, which will result in uh, more risks. And with more risks, you are going to have more failures or you're going to at least tend to have more failures. Now, overall, it principally incentivizes undeveloped games. That's like, no matter what, that's like the underlying incentive right there. You're paying them for an undeveloped game. Now, I personally do not buy um, early access games unless they really do one of these things or multiple. One, they have a solid roadmap that they actually follow. They're like, okay, uh, Q2 of this year, we're going to have this done. And what happens? Bam, they get it done. You know, and they're not just delaying their game constantly. I'm, I understand sometimes your roadmap has to be adjusted a few times or maybe a time or two. But when it repeatedly keeps happening or the update doesn't come out, then it's worrying. And I'm not going to buy that game. Also, I may buy the early access game if I have an insight into the type of people that's creating it. Maybe I've talked to them or I've seen people talk to them or they're in the same community as me. Then I can see whether or not they're serious about completing the game. Or whether their circumstances is going to allow them to complete the game. Because yes, if it is like, hey, I know they're going to finish the game. They have the they have the ability to. They have the drive to. I'm going to get early access. That will overcome my not buying early access. And if we have a crazy price deal. For example, if a game otherwise would be 15 bucks but early access. Especially at the beginning. It's like 3 4 5 bucks, And I'm kind of interested in it. Okay, that can make me buy an early access game. Just because of the price discount. You know, but overall, early access games do lead to more unfinished games for multiple reasons. And I don't think they're as good as what many people think. And so many people are used to getting early access games. I think it's actually a problem because we used to not have early access games. It used to be completed games, finished games. And if it wasn't a finished game, then people thought it was crappy. People, it got a reputation that it was bad. I was talking with uh, Dr. Cielo Cephalo on a discussion, which I will have linked in the description below. And he mentioned, you know, Sonic 06. That's exactly what happened. You know, it seemed like an unfinished, unoptimized game, unpolished game, and people gave it a bad reputation. But now people are giving a ton of money to unfinished games. And it's definitely different. We just have to be careful with the incentives we give the producers as consumers. We need to make sure that we're not incentivizing them completely to make an unfinished game 
instead of them making a finished game if we had not given them the extra funds. So moving on to the last point is DLC. Now DLC, of course, downloadable content. It's just extra content. It's at least what it's supposed to be. Sometimes it's not. Now DLC is fantastic because it gives you more content to generally an already completed game. So it's just more content and it lets people make money off of more content. Now that's with paid. Sometimes you get free DLC, which builds goodwill for the company and is amazing. I mean, you get free DLC, even if it sucks, it's like, oh, well, I didn't pay for it, but they tried to put something out and paid DLC is so amazing. Just think of Super Smash Brothers. Think how long the production phase would have been or the development phase would have been if they tried to include all those characters that they have in it now thanks to DLC. I would venture to say that I don't know if they'd have a single more fighter in and they would have just uh, not had any extra fighters beyond what was in the game when it dropped. So DLC can be amazing. Now the problem comes in when a game is incomplete and the DLC is just paying for hopefully the full game. Sometimes you don't even get the full game with the DLC. And I'm going to call it out Pokemon Sword and Shield. You have an incomplete game for multiple reasons. An unpolished, incomplete game. There's no other way to put it. And then you have this DLC that's half the price of the full game. It was supposed to be full game. And you still don't get the full game. There's still Pokemon missing in the D with the DLC. Pokemon still missing. Which is absolutely kind of insane to me. That people still buy the DLC. Considering it's still an incomplete game. Now. That's pretty much the video, right? Because microtransactions aren't evil. DLC is amazing. Unless you have the people that's trying to sell you a finished game for as DLC. And people should be more skeptical of early access games. I know this is a different kind of video, but I felt like talking about it. Uh, I was thinking about it a lot. I've in fact thought about it a lot over the last year. And then I finally decided I was going to put it into written form and in video form. But you definitely need to be more skeptical of EA games, or early access games. And you got to think of it in terms of incentives. And when with microtransactions, the incentives often line up to positive for most people. DLC is often a positive for most people. It's not a DLC for a full game. And early access games, I think, actually incentivize for undeveloped games, which I think most people do not want undeveloped games. If they had to pick between an undeveloped game and a developed game, they'd pick the developed game. So, despite the vocal hatred of microtransactions, People's actions show that they love games with microtransactions. And they love freemium games. People complain about microtransactions, but there's a reason why the top 18 of the 19 App Store games are freemium games. There's a reason why Genshin Impact is so freaking good and so popular. Why Valorant, I think, was it Warzone? COD Warzone, I think, is free to play. There's tons of games that are just free to play. You don't have to buy. And if you do want to purchase a microtransaction, it doesn't take away in a lot of these games from being like, oh, I got to pay this just to get the game completed. Now, there are issues with microtransactions sometimes. I will say that, you know, if it gives you a competitive advantage, and I'm not talking about an EXP boost in a competitive game, I'm talking about an like padding your stats, that is absolutely a problem. Again, if it's a full game, but or supposedly a full game, but you have to pay for the game really behind microtransactions, that is a problem. Now, it makes something that used to, uh, it could be a problem if it makes something that used to require a challenge, now be viable. You know, so people before had to go through this challenge to get this, and then afterwards, they're just like, oh, just pay this amount of money, you can get it. That's irritating. You devalue, you make it less meaningful what these people did to beat this challenge. Not to mention, also a problem with padding uh, pretty much the luck on streamers uh streams of these games with microtransactions we all know about that um you have the problem of hey my god i'm getting all these s rank triple s rank people i got two in this one and three packs later i got two that is deceiving the consumers and that becomes a legal issue or it should become a legal issue when it comes to a person saw that and they went to go buy you know, do a microtransaction on the basis of that 
purposefully deceitful or deceiving information then it, it that's a huge problem that i do see with some games now another problem with microtransactions just to get my last thought in here is that or can be is when you make something that's important for the game you know like an item that requires a challenge to go get you make that buyable to shortcut the challenge because it makes the game just kind of less difficult right it makes it the game you why, why are you playing instead of blind fun it takes away the meaning the because challenges have meaning to them you know for example if you could imagine if this was zelda and you had to go through this dungeon to get the grappling hook but come to find out you just had to go to a store somewhere in hyrule and you pay for it and for three bucks and you just get to skip that dungeon that is a problem because at that point people aren't really playing the game they're skipping challenges or skipping the important part of the game and they're just paying for it now i think the people that do that are idiots but i think it also makes for a bad game anyways that's all for this video you yeah, have kind of a rant video and i had to stop and think about my thoughts a little bit more and i had a few things written down i had to look sometimes and then i had to think about it i'm like wait i've thought of this too so a bit different uh, not my let's see uh, not my only video like this i think i have coming out i think i have one or two more anyways that's all for this video i'll see you in the next one make sure you like this video if you did like it or you thought it was at least add some interesting commentary with it make sure you comment below if you disagree with me or even if you disagree or even if you agree with me i would like to know that make sure you subscribe I'll see you in the next video. Retro on.